Hello, hi, welcome to today's episode of Pass the Cheese, please. Today we have Nicole. Hello. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, thanks for joining. We appreciate it. Um, this is the first, day, like one of the first really nice days in Minnesota. And so my windows are open. I did close the two that are closest to me, but I just heard somebody walk by with a dog tag that was jingling. So we might have to close the other larger window that I have just in case it gets too wild. No problem. That's the thing you have to get used to again as soon as the weather gets nice here it's like you yeah. throw open all the windows and then you realize you hear the entire neighborhood yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, what was it yesterday or maybe it was even this morning somebody was smoking and i was like oh yeah haven't had that come through my window in quite some time <laughs> nope nope that hasn't been a problem for a while <laughs> this weekend uh it was i i'm hesitant to say nice enough uh, but I did have my windows open for a little bit. It was like in the forties and I was like, Oh, it's so sunny. It's so nice. And it's windy. And you know, you want fresh air. And then 20 minutes later, I was like too cold. I have to close everything. I'm like, Oh no. It's that time of year where we're just testing limits. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, 45. What's that going to feel like? That's gotta be nice. Right. And sometimes, yes. Sometimes the sun's out, mm -hmm. you're warming up. Sometimes you go out and that wind hits you and it's like, no, Yep, yep. Not nice yet. <laughs> it is, it's so funny. Also, I reacclimate to like my climate. So, you know, we both originally being from California. Right. Every time I go back to California and I, uh, like, I get cold, like, you know, 50 degrees and I need a jacket like back there. But I'm yep. also such a jerk whenever people are like, ooh, it's so chilly. I'm like, you don't know what cold is. I was just about to tell that exact same story. <laughs> That's exactly what I do when I go home is, yeah, it hits 50, everyone's in their winter coats and it's like, oh, shorts weather. <laughs> but I'm also cold because I've yeah. reacclimated to California weather. I will say, it, I don't appreciate when people get the puffy coats out. When oh it, yeah in California at that temperature. Uh, yes, that's what I wear when it's zero degrees. Uh, right. <laughs> but I'll go for a light jacket. I'll go, for, yeah, I'm not ashamed. I'll go for a little sweater. Some layers. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I know that I know that I'm such a jerk about it. But you know, also, it's all relative. <laughs> it's, also, we've suffered through such cold. It's our, you know, it's what makes us feel better. Yes. Yeah, that we we've you know, really toughed out some extreme temperatures and we've got to kind of, I don't know, show that off to other people. <laughs> it's the only thing that I have. Like I have not, <laughs> not had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations in my life for which I appreciate. I'm very privileged in that aspect. And so absolutely. The polar vortex, I, I will wear that. Right, right, absolutely. Um, it was also funny this weekend, I was playing D&D &D with my, my fellow California friends uh, back home. And, you know, everyone's like, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's nice this weekend. It's going to be 45. And they're just like, Ugh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I um, previously lived in Florida mm -hmm. for um, a few years and have some friends back there still. And I feel like our go-to topic of conversation is the temperature difference between where I am and where they are. Yeah. And generally this time of year, it can be anywhere from a 30 degree difference to a 100 degree difference. Yeah. You know, when we were hitting those negative twenties and they're in the eighties, yeah, it's go-to. And they're, you know, they're just like, what are you doing to yourself? Yeah, Come back. <laughs> I, I only have myself to blame for this. I chose to move here. So. I chose this life. <laughs> yeah, I recognize that as well. Um, oh, man. Anyway, we don't have to, we don't have to be a classic Minnesotan always talking about the weather and how nice I know it's just that go to <laughs> it's our gut instinct now. It really is. Survival, staying warm and weather. Yeah, it unites us all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, let's move into one of our topics or one of our segments, I should say, which is called Pass the Cheese, Please, where I compliment the guest. Um, and as we have been friends for almost three years now. Yeah. Um, and I, I've said this before about like 
Minnesotans, like Minnesotans are a really tough nut to crack, you know, and I have been very lucky and I feel very grateful for the, the friends who are Minnesotans that I do have, um, you know, because I basically got vouched for in a friend group and then people were like, oh, you're Megan's best friend. Great. You're our best friend now too. Like, yeah, so I like, I'm very grateful and super lucky about that. But the people that I've made friends with outside of that, a lot of them like are not from Minnesota. And so that's been super interesting. Um, but when we like, when we met, you were definitely somebody that I was like, oh, I want to like, I want to hang out with this person more. And we kind of have like a wild story, but also like, to give you like an actual compliment as opposed to just rehashing our history together. Um, as a fellow Leslie Noper in the world, it is like very nice and very wonderful to like see that same spirit reflected back, you know? Um, and I, I appreciate that very much. And you're somebody who is like so unabashedly who you are and like you're so unashamed, not that you have any reason to be, but you're you like, <laughs> come into a room, you're like, here I am, and it's great, and it's wonderful, and I love it and appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank I was you. just about to say, you know, when you mentioned that, I do feel like I, I found a kindred spirit in you when we, when we first met. It was you, when you come into a room and you see someone, you're like, I want to be friends with them. Mm -hmm. We're going to get along. That's yeah. exactly how I felt when I met you. Yeah, thank and you. yeah, then I, I just always appreciate how something that I really love about you is that you're just so, always so excited to do things and make plans. And then when we're around each other, I feel like I can just talk to you for a hundred hours. Like we'll never run out of things to talk about because they're, we're so passionate about so many of the same things. Um, and you. you just always brighten my day. Whenever I see Jackie, I'm like, oh, I'm in such a better mood. I'm just so happy that I met you and I have you as a friend here because making friends post-college can be pretty hit or miss. And I just feel so lucky that we, we came into each other's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's so wonderful. Like, that's very nice to hear. I appreciate that. Um, we, yeah, we are I, fellow Leslie Nopes, as you yeah. said. So, <laughs> um, I think also, um, like just kind of like you like you saying that just kind of made me think of I think as we get older and we kind of figure out what we need and what we want in our relationships you know and, and we all kind of mature a little bit more as people because you know sometimes like when we were growing up the friends that we had just might have been because you saw this person and you sat next to them every single day you know and and so when you like sit back and kind of reevaluate like friendships and relationships and you know like they all feel like different things and you know there's people that I was friends with in college that I thought we were best friends and I was like I could never live without this person and then you know some small really like really small thing happens and we're not friends anymore and you're just like oh my gosh like but then you like you look back at it as you're older and you're like oh no that was a very toxic relationship that was very absolutely so a whole roundabout ways of saying like I think as we get older there's just kind of like a natural filter and just like a natural like weeding out system that you do and like with yes. people in your life, um, you know, and, and then we know this, but we kind of have this wild story of, <laughs> we, we all listen to a, a podcast, a couple of us listen to a podcast and they had like a meetup group, um, which was really like, I really appreciate that whoever put that together. Oh yeah. And we met there and then there was, uh, there was two other people, um, who we are no longer friends with and then another person who we are still friends with um and we all kind of like just were like oh yeah we get along let's be friends and we tried to get together to do things and very quickly these two other people just kind of like fell up, fell off you know and so you know it's just like <laughs> is it like just its own natural like oh this didn't work for us right yeah, yeah. and it's just finding the people who have a sense of follow-through that are like yes I want a friendship. I'm, I'm working for this friendship. Yeah. Yeah. I've been really like, I've had to reevaluate a lot of things uh, during this pandemic uh, for my, like myself and myself and my expectations for things. And oh, of course. Yeah. And you know, like <laughs> just like somebody who's okay with not texting me, like, I just can't have you in my life. Like just <laughs> no communication, like, you know, and, and like, I get like, if you need a couple days to respond, that's fine. Right. But if you're just like, <laughs> 
going to just expect me to do all the work. Like I can't do that anymore. You know? Absolutely. And it's, it is the form of communication with the least amount of effort. Mm -hmm. Though I do understand the days where you get texts because I have these, Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone does where you get a text message from someone you love deeply. And you're like, I don't have the emotional capacity to text this person back for whatever reason. Like, Mm -hmm. even if it's just a simple response, there's some days where you're like, I have nothing to say, or I I can't muster up a way to say it. But then, you know, it's that eventual follow through that matters. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, and um, I think, I think one thing, one beneficial thing that has happened in this pandemic is um, like, we are all taking a lot more stock in what we need as, you know, as an individual. Yes, Um, absolutely. What's important to us. Yeah. And so hopefully we will all have like better, mental health and better mindset and stuff at the end of this. Um. Yeah, (laughs) one hopes. Although I am a little concerned about re-entering society because on my best days, I forget how to interact with humans in the few ways that you do now, like doctor's appointments or going to the grocery store or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I see someone and they, you know, they're friendly to me because it's part of their job. And I'm like, they friends friends I tell them life's I'll tell them my life story like this is gonna be great and then that on top of I just had a baby two months ago and so I'm not sleeping so I'm really forgetting words and how to be a human and interact with other people so I was a little (laughs) side note little concerned about doing the podcast because I forgot the words studio apartment the other day so I'm like (laughs) I'll maybe be able to string some sentences together for Jackie, but yeah, between all that, interacting with people is hard. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was at the store the other day, and and I was checking out, and the person said, like, what's going on? And I said, like, good, and then I was like, mm-mm, that was mm-hmm. not good, good going on. <laughs> yeah, 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 and then I was like, I mean, nothing, and then I was just, like, so befuddled of, like, how did we get here? And how do I communicate to this person of like, I am never in society anymore. So my bad. Yeah. I'm sure as a whole, people are noticing that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's wild for sure. Well, we do have another segment called wine about it. If, um, oh, sure. Anything that you want to complain about, but you know, if you don't, that's okay too. Ooh. What do, what can I whine about? Complain about re-entering society? Mm, yeah. Oh, I could whine about, uh, I don't know if whining about it's the right, uh, right. Well, yeah, I'll whine about it. I am not sleeping enough these days. And again, it's, it's because of the baby. And yeah. so it's to be expected. But I think the thing specifically I'm going to whine about is um, insomnia because I'm so tired and I wake up to feed the baby a few times a night. And one would think that I'm so exhausted, I'd fall right back to sleep. But nope, I sit there and I lay down and I just think about all the things that have happened that day. Yeah. For some reason, rehashing all of the conversations I've had, all the text messages I've sent, yeah. planning my next day. Mm-hmm. I just, I really envy the people who can fall asleep like that. Yeah. Like, uh, I would, I would love for that to be me. I, if I could change one thing about myself, it would be that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've struggled with sleep for, you know, since I was a teenager and I'm not going to say that I have the similar situation as you do, uh, cause I do not have a newborn, just a cat. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I like, I just now have this whole routine of like, okay, like and I, I have started taking like melatonin or like right. kind of like sleep aids, which like sometimes they're successful and sometimes they aren't, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, all right, I have to just turn on a cartoon because <laughs> I need something that's not going to like, um, like get me emotionally charged in any way. Yeah. And- well, that's, um, So I have to do something while I'm feeding the baby to keep myself awake for that time. So I, I'm either reading an ebook or, 
or watching something. And I feel like I've had to strike the balance between keeping myself awake and overstimulating myself. And that's a really hard line to walk. It is. I would say for a while I was trying the Great British Bake Off mm-hmm. and that might be too calming. I was really mm-hmm. struggling to stay awake during that. So I don't know if there, if, sound off in the comments yeah. if you know <laughs> of something that would keep me awake but not overstimulate me for nighttime feedings. Yeah, in my experience, it's cartoons or yeah. shows that I have watched a thousand times. But even yes. then, like, because I'm such an emotional person, like watching The Office, Jim and Pam's engagement always makes me mm. cry. Uh, their wedding always makes like any wedding, anything related to wedding, I will always cry. And I'm like, you have yes. seen it 14 times. What, like, why does this still, like, yeah. And like, there are still things that still make me emotional. Um, I'm there with you. <laughs> the Parks and Rec does that for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's there. another one. I can't watch it because I'm just going to laugh the whole time. You're right. <laughs> We're funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, but yeah, cartoon says that's what I found to be. Cause it also like, it kind yeah. of puts me into being like, oh, this isn't a real show. Like, I yeah. heard, you know, and that sounds like I'm diminishing cartoons and their, <laughs> what they've given to the world. But uh, yeah, like it's, it's just like silly cartoons, not like she that has like, is actually contributing a lot of like positive things and like Avatar that, you know, focuses on some things. But anyway. Absolutely. Small little, small little uh, soapbox to stand on. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Mm. I picked not a good time to take a bite. That's all right. <laughs> um, but I wanted to say about great, great British Bake Off. Oh man. Um, so I got super into. Well, I mean, like we all did, got super into it. And then um, I wanted to watch because on a certain streaming platform they only have a certain amount or they only only have certain seasons or whatever right series I think they call it um oh I just think I thought of something that I want to whine about so Mm. they only have a certain ones and I was like I kind of want to see the beginning and like the first ones of this um and so I was able to like access like the like I found a way to watch the first season and I fell asleep within the first 10 minutes trying to watch the show <laughs> like just oh no <laughs> yeah and that hasn't happened for like the newer seasons right but, yeah that first and I've tried a couple times to watch the first season and like get really? through the, and I just like immediately fall asleep interesting I, I wonder <laughs> so maybe you should not watch that when you're doing baby stuff because you'll immediately fall asleep. Absolutely. Maybe that would be the right thing to watch after though. When yeah. I'm back in bed trying to fall asleep, yeah. just lull me. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that I did want to whine about on, so on the famous streaming platform, Schmet um, they are now doing... It took me a second. <laughs> yeah there we go um I'll try and like switch letters like Baco tell you know um but mm-hmm. unfortunately it's just a one a one word one um but they will how is the best way to describe this they don't have the seasons or the series in like one two three order they start with right. the most recent one and yes. then they like they're okay yeah season seven and then they're like season six and you're like no like <laughs> this doesn't make any sense that really confused me the other day because I finished whichever series of the Great British Bake Off I was on mm-hmm. and then it went backwards in time because I had just watched the first series with the new hosts mm-hmm. and the new judge um and then all of a sudden the old hosts were back I was certain that I remembered the the intro <laughs> yeah. it, it, took me a moment because in my sleep deprived state I was certain I was just confusing something no Netflix, why are you working backwards? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, schmick, schmick, schmick. Yeah. Schmick, 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 schmick. Yeah, schmick, Yeah, like, what the, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't appreciate this. I'm just trying yeah. to, I'm trying to make it through the day. Like, why would you make this so much harder to, for me? Right, right, right. Who's watching it like this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but also first world problems, you know. That is truly, truly. But speaking of baking, I know that's something that you and I have in common yeah. is that we've both been really into baking this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've always, I always enjoy getting to try the little treats that you're working on, all the little chocolates and, um, and cookies and and brownies and whatnot. So, Thanks. yeah, that's uh, fun. Are you working on anything uh, lately? Any new projects? No. Um, so, I mean, I guess this is a good time to plug social medias in a couple of different ways. Um, if you want to follow that, like what this project is, you can follow it at underscore pass. Or, excuse me, pass underscore the cheese on social media. And then uh, my personal one is Jack Selex. And so I have been doing this like hot mess kitchen, which I would love to have a bakery called hot mess kitchen. So nobody steal this because I'm totally like, I'm a casual baker. I'm really confident in like a lot of my baking and so much to the point that I'm like, I know what like a tablespoon of vanilla looks like. And if it's mm -hmm. like a little bit less or a little bit more, that's fine. But like my stuff always tastes great, but it just kind of maybe doesn't look the, the perfect you know um and like I will even do things the, the the way that you're supposed to the right way and it still doesn't work out like a couple weeks ago I made a chocolate cake and I um I wanted to put chocolate chips in it and I know to through Great British Bake Off if you don't want your fillings to sink to the bottom sink. you coat them in um in flour mm -hmm. and so I don't know if you're supposed to like pour the batter in and then put the mix-ins in because that doesn't Good question that seems to me it would just be on the top mm -hmm. uh, and so do you mix it in and then I don't know I've tried I tried this chocolate cake two weeks in a row both different ways both didn't totally work out so I have no <laughs> it's a mystery yeah so just like things don't totally work the, the way that they should for me um but to answer your question um we also another little peek inside our friendship um there's a couple of friends of us, we've started doing like debates of things of what is the best, we did one of what is the best, best breakfast food. Uh, and so we've talked about, we talked about bagels. I think that was our winner. So it was big bagels. Yeah, they won. Yeah. yeah um, Nick was shocked. Yeah. My, my husband, Nick, uh, like uh, he is a big breakfast burrito fan. So. Look, a lot of arguments were made for breakfast burritos. <laughs> I mean, it really kind of broke my heart that it came down to <laughs> breakfast yeah. burritos because I love them both dearly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think the arguments for bagels just went out more yeah. versatile. Um, and so since then, I've been wanting to make bagels since then. I just haven't like uh, put the like, it's that's kind of just kind of a lot of effort that I'm just like, you know, don't always have the motivation to do. Been there. <laughs> um, but I also, um, I, been interested uh, and I tried it once in making my own oat milk um because I'm trying to you know decrease my oh risk, yeah um mm -hmm. you know in the world and you know yeah like, trying to do things of like eating less meat and composting and you know like oat milk is the uh most environmentally friendly and also like the best practice uh like uh, like almond milk they wake up bees a month early out of their hibernation so that's really harmful to bees for it to do hmm. almond milk um, oh wow coconut, yeah coconut milk like they do not pay farmers very well and it's it's a very like hazardous job so <laughs> if you want to get bummed out read all about that kind of stuff um yeah, but oh, sure trying to make my own oat milk and then my friend was who gave me the recipe, Laura, who's actually been on the show before. Um, she was like, oh yeah, you know, you, we like reuse the oats for the dog. And I was like, oh, I can reuse the oats for like overnight oats. But yeah. I also do like a baked oatmeal thing. And then there's like this banana oats muffin recipe that I have that you have to grind the oats. And so if the oats are already ground for the oat milk, like, so <laughs> there's a couple of things revolving around oat milk <laughs> that I want to try. Those sort of zero waste product uh, projects yeah. are really exciting because I don't know if I've mentioned it. My dad um, brews beer mm -hmm. as uh, his hobby. Mm -hmm. And something that my mom really likes to do is to use the spent grain mm. from his, the brewing process to make bread or you can make pizza dough. Mm. Um, I think there's some sort of sweet treats that you can incorporate it into. Mm. But it's I, I love it when you can find another use yeah. for the things that would otherwise be waste. 
yeah, um, I've been noticing also like just how many bananas I go through. Because <laughs> um, uh, I, I have like a plastic tub that has, um, I take all the stickers off um, vegetables and fruits and stuff because they are not compostable. So I put them on this like plastic thing. This is just like my lazy way instead of walking two feet to the garbage can. I just put it on this <laughs> plastic thing. Um, but I was looking at the other day, I'm like, oh man, I have so many banana stickers. Um, and another fun fact, if you, um, obviously you can use banana peels to like put into your plants and for compost and stuff. But you know, that's not always capable sometimes. <laughs> if you put banana peels in like a, you know, a thing of water and then cover it with water, let it sit for 24 hours, then you can use the water and it's like compost water. Oh, to water your plants? Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I currently have a really gross cup of <laughs> banana water sitting on my Mmm, <laughs> banana water, it's mm, delicious. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I did eggshell water um, a couple weeks ago and I totally like, <laughs> This has happened a couple times where you like put something not safely and you like realize you're like, oh my God, it's gonna fall. And so you completely like overcommit and overreact and like knock and you're like, ah. So I had to clean up egg, egg water, eggshell egg water. water. Yeah. Delicious. Well, yep. it's our own fault. <laughs> yeah. That's well, smart. I'll have to remember that. Yeah. You know, take, take it what you, you want. Um, but yeah. Well, we are kind of at the, the end of our time. Is there anything you want to bring awareness to or anything you want to promote? Mm, yes. Public libraries. Yay! Use your public library. Go sign up for a card or do it online. Do it safely, whatever way you can. Use your public library. I bet they have resources you're not even aware about, or you could be very aware of it. I just find the public, there's so much that the public libraries do that people aren't even aware of, yeah. especially now, I found so many branches are doing amazing things mm -hmm. with uh, digital resources. Okay. So a lot of them are making, you know, ancestry.com available. Oh. There's different sorts of databases and um, streaming services that libraries are offering now, mm -hmm. books, audio books. You know, if, if you can't go and get a physical book safely, mm -hmm. um, check out your public library they're yeah. near and dear to my heart and and if you ever get a chance go talk to a librarian call them you know if you can see them safely mm -hmm. uh they're you know they they've got all the answers or they can <laughs> find you all the answers so that's what I'm gonna plug is libraries yeah. awesome we love that uh we funnily enough we talked about that on Laura's episode as well um oh we that's awesome about, yeah we were talking about a couple things um that you can get at libraries that you might not know about um and she mentioned like seeds you could get like packets and I had no idea about that but something I thought about later that I kind of kicked myself for not bringing up uh but oh, ties into baking you can like some places they have baking tins and baking pans that you can borrow which yeah would have known it's great I feel like a lot of libraries are expanding special collections like that mm -hmm. um I've heard of some libraries I don't know if any near us are doing this but some libraries will have clothes that you can check out for mm -hmm. interviews like if you don't have a suit jacket or tie or or whatever you can check those out a lot of um children's libraries have stem kits that you can check out and take home like different science uh science kits and whatnot bring them back um american girl dolls that you can check out bring back it's oh it's the greatest peep they're just getting more and more innovative who wouldn't want to fund public libraries? That's amazing. I know, so I know. they're a miracle, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah, public libraries are great. Um, we could talk about this all day. <laughs> Forever, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your time. We really appreciate everything you shared with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me, Jackie. This was great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bye. <laughs>